The wait is over and AI masking is here in Capture One. It launched today and I want to examine it and see how well it works. So here we go. So if this is your first time joining me, hey, my name is Joe and we talk about Capture One on this channel. Uh, pretty pretty predominantly. Um, I've taught classes on Capture One for a number of years and uh, it, it is the editing software that I personally prefer to use for uh, just about everything in photo editing. And we have been waiting for AI masking in Capture One for a very long time now and it launched today. Uh, and so I'm, I wanna take a look at this. I wanna do some, some kind of first impressions. We know that it is going to be truly different. Um, this is kind of a demarcation point for Capture One. And we could tell it immediately from the download because when we take a look at the download, it just says Capture One. All previous versions had a, a version, right? So the last version here was uh, Capture One 23. Um, before that was 22, 21, et cetera, right? And so this is getting back to the announcement that Capture One made a few months ago, which was saying that we would no longer have a yearly version, but instead, as features were developed, they would just be released. And that would make it so you didn't have to wait for features that had been developed, which seems like the appropriate way to go, right? Uh, I want my new toys now. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have downloaded the newest version of Capture One and let's take a look at the new Layers and Masks tool. It now says Layers and Masks. That's already different. And so this is laid out in, in similar but obviously different ways, right? So it says Layers and Masks. We have big buttons for subject and background. Yay, this is wonderful. This is absolutely where we want to go. Um, then we have our brushes or other tools for making or adding to masks, right? We have our regular drawing mask, we have our magic brush, but we also have an AI brush, which is going to allow us to select regions or try to find objects or shapes in total. We still have linear gradient, radial gradient, we still have our healing tool, we still have our cloning tool, we still have the erasing uh, brushes that work in the same way. So erasing brush, magic eraser, and then of course an AI eraser. Awesome. Um, we now have the refine mask as a button at the bottom rather than something we have to right click the layer to go in and find to be able to change that radius out. Uh, now it's just a button and opacity has been moved to the bottom. A lot of people missed that this was here. So I'm glad to see it uh, really definitively uh, easy to see. And of course we have our image layer. This used to say background layer and now it just says image layer. So let's go ahead and pick something here and, and try to do some subject and let's see how this works out of the box. So I've got uh, a portrait and let's go ahead and hit subject and just see what it does, right? Out of the box and it finds just the face. Now, I actually ran this particular image as a test uh, before uh, hitting record uh, and it actually found a different section. It actually found all of her skin tone interestingly. Um, so uh, we're finding a little bit of a different uh, amount here. That's interesting. So I'm going to grab the AI brush tool and it will preview areas that we can add to the mask. And just by doing a couple clicks there, uh, yeah, we are actually finding the hair reasonably well. We're finding um, the rest of the uh, the rest of the person reasonably reasonably well. Um, so I'm I'm pretty happy there. That's nice. Now if we come into an area, right, and we find some areas where like this is always a trouble, right, with AI masking when you have hairs that have some space behind them. Of course, we still have the magic brush, right? So we'd be able to come in and try to remove, uh, oops, that's the magic additive. Uh, we still have the magic eraser to try to come in and clean that up a little bit. So uh, that's always a difficult thing uh, with AI masking, but that's the way that kind of seems to be working. And we could of course try to find similar pixels uh, inside of there with just a regular brush, uh, refining the edge, and of course, we're looking at the auto mask features. All those features are still there. Okay, so not bad, right? That is way faster, way easier than it used to be. And I can, I can run with that, right? Now we could do a background, and let's take a look at what happens if we look at background uh, versus uh, taking a look at the mask. We could right click it and we could just duplicate the selected layer 
okay? And then of course we could invert it, right? So that's our, uh, that's gonna be our inverted version. So let's, let's call that inverted just so that I have kind of a, uh, a comparison, right? Now I want to make a new layer and I'm, uh, the layers plus is over here. So let's add a new empty and I want to just select the background. So let's see the difference between, between that. And as we would expect, the background works as a inversion of whatever the select subject would be, okay? In this case, it's going to do this, which means we would have to find the AI erasing brush and come in and, uh, and, come in and do some erasing. But with a couple clicks, we could make that happen. And so now, rename this as background uh, button. Let's take a look, background button versus the inverted, right? And actually something interesting happened here. And that is when I pressed the background button, it immediately created a new layer as opposed to using the new adjustment layer that I had, right? So it looks like that is going to automatically be creating a new layer when you have the background button or the subject button, even if you're inside of a created layer. So that's that's an interesting uh, way for that to work. No problem. Let's see how this works with some other stuff. Um, let's come to a flower picture here with a lot of uh, it being kind of a background that is going uh, going into the background, the subject being out of focus. Well, let's see what happens if I just do uh, a subject selection. Let's just see, because this flower might be a little bit tricky. Oops. As I, that's my fault there. I'm going to kind of get rid of that. So it found the flower even though a lot of it is going out of focus. So this is the select subject off of a flower with really shallow depth of field. That's pretty cool. That's working really well in that case. So I can hit background. I'd be able to grab uh, then a really well-defined background. And that right there is what we wanted, right? Uh, I know that uh, there's a couple features inside of Lightroom Classic that are not in here, specifically the uh, finding a person, right? Identifying a person and finding the eyes, finding the clothing, the skin, uh, the lips, the teeth of a person. And that's pretty useful stuff. Uh, but the big thing, um, right, your 80-20 rule kind of stuff, is what I really want to select subject and select background. So we are uh, comparatively here a little more than a year behind the development inside of Lightroom Classic. Um, as we don't have select person, we don't have select individual parts of people. Um, but this is the main things. And then one thing that was not in the version from Lightroom Classic from a year and a half ago, a little bit more than a year ago, um, was this version of just finding an object essentially. So let's take a look at how that's gonna work. I'm gonna come here, uh, a little bit more complicated of uh, a, an image. And so we're gonna do a couple things. I want to see what happens. Can I grab just an individual B? And it looks like, yeah, I kind of can. Uh, it's grabbing looks like a little bit of the background there, but overall finding the bee reasonably well. And I can add the legs pretty reasonably. Um, I can add another uh, layer and I can add in. And it's very, very, um, it seems to be kind of uh, the slight, slight movements tend to move this guy around. And so that's adding a lot of the extra flower. So I might want to come in maybe with the um, kind of the magic brush to see how that adds. So using those in conjunction looks to be uh, a pretty good strategy because now I'm able to grab those two Bs reasonably well. So actually grabbing individual objects is, is kind of working for me. I can add another layer and let's see how easy it is to just add the flower. Um, and then come in and subtract one B, subtract the other B, and we can grab the flower. So now I have the flower, I have one B, and I have another B. That's pretty good. This image is difficult to mask. This image here, uh, I chose specifically because it's at an offset angle, because we have bees and a yellow interior to a flower, because we have changing depths of field. This is a difficult one to mask and grab individual objects. I'm pretty happy with that. 
that that's actually something that's working really well for me. Um, I don't even know. Let's find out what selecting subject would do on this particular image. And it's grabbing all of this center area, some of the flower, some of the center part of the flower there. So not too bad. Of course, selecting background is going to be everything else. Um, and we would be able to then add in if we wanted to kind of that interior section. And I think the magic brush would probably be the easiest way to do so. Um, so there's a couple different ways you could do the select background and then we could add into it and then invert, uh, uh, duplicate and invert that to grab both of these. So you've got a lot of tools to play with to make very, very fast masks, which looks really nice here. Let's come to another one. This image sometimes gives, uh, uh, some uh, to some uh, masking tools fits. Um, so let's see what happens if I just grab the subject. Sometimes it grabs the bird and it grabs the branch. Sometimes, yep, yeah, so bird and branch in this case. But of course, that's really nice and reasonable there. This is actually the AI mask that has tended to happen uh, with this image with the Lightroom Classic when I've done this in Lightroom Classic over the last few years. Um, and of course, this is super easy to be able to grab an erasing brush naturally and just remove that if I wanted to. So um, that's, that's pretty fast. And now I've got the bird, I'd be able to grab the background really, really easily and add back in the branch, whatever I want. Um, so it's finding that. Okay, um, everything else, that, that's the tool, right? It's actually very, very simple to use. Uh, it's intuitive. Um, it works on uh, finding similar pixels and similar focus, which is why it grabs both the bird and the branch here because they're similarly in focus. Uh, so it looks like it's actually doing a pretty complicated algorithm of focus and similar pixels to be able to find uh, things. I think the, the, the surprise feature here for me and the one that I'm, I'm gonna use a lot is the AI brush, right? Which is grabbing objects or parts of objects. That's going to allow us to modify masks, I think really intelligently. And having a uh, an eraser version of each one of our brush tools is a defining feature of Capture One. I'm glad they kept that. We don't have finding individual people, we don't have finding parts of people, and we don't have intersecting masks which is a little bit of a shame because I find that intersecting masks uh, is actually a really useful feature inside of LRC. Um, but uh, you don't need that. This is the major step forward that we have wanted. This, this is fantastic, right? Um, it is not every single AI masking feature known to man, but it's all of your greatest hits. It's all the ones that we need. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I haven't tested out yet the other major feature from this release from today, which is the ability when tethering to unplug yourself, shoot pictures, and then plug back in. But having tethered in spaces where I need to move the camera and my USB cable is just too short, <laughs> um, uh, having been in that situation, I can tell you that that is absolutely fantastic and something that I didn't even know that I really wanted because I didn't even know, I didn't even think that that would be possible. So I'm going to be testing that soon here. But this is uh, first impressions on the new layers and masks tool. Um, two thumbs up. It's, it's every feature that I really wanted. Um, so if this is your first time here, I talk about Capture One on at least a weekly basis um, and I hope to see you around again in the future. All right, peace.